Hi, I'm Danny V, and I'm with WK Productions, and I just want to give you a little breakdown of why we decided to involve ourselves in documenting um, Fight Fest. I was uh, talking to a couple of my friends, Joey Boswell and Joey Hopeless, and they grew up in the hardcore scene and they just loved it. They are every, they breathe hardcore, they walk hardcore. Um, and I just, I've always been curious because I myself have never <laughs> been to a hardcore show, not until uh, Fight Fest, that is. And, um, and we got into this debate about how, uh, uh, what hardcore is all about. And, and, and at a certain point, Joey, uh, Joey Hopeless said, you know what, you just need to go. You just need to go to a show. And I said, I'll only go to a show if I can do a documentary. And I was saying this just offhand, I was joking around with Kevin. And lo and behold, Kevin the next day comes up to me and says, okay, well, we have, a, we have your documentary, <laughs> so we're about to do that. you into hardcore? Oh, hell. Um, <laughs> honestly, I think the draw for me was being able to, to go to a safe space with no safe spaces, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Being able to go somewhere you could smack the fucking teeth out of somebody's head with no repercussions. You know, you go somewhere where... Even if you didn't yeah. fucking fit in or you didn't belong, you still had somewhere to go on the weekends. Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's been a pretty monumental part of my life for a really long time. Um, and for better or for worse, I don't know that I'd really have it any other way. That's a good, that's a good question. I mean, a good answer. Uh, what would you say to someone who's new uh, to getting into the scene uh, or like a... Uh, or just trying to get into hardcore, what do you, what do you say to them to convince them? They're like, hey, this is the place to go. What to do? Stay the fuck away. <laughs> you would. You would. Get out. Get out. All right. No. <laughs> also, you're the best dimes out <laughs> uh, what would you say? What would you say to the critics of hardcore then? You know, fuck yourself. Beautiful. You can't, fucking, you can't fucking criticize something you don't know anything about. And especially people that are fucking critics around here, if I don't fucking know who you are, 
That means you don't have a fucking place to criticize anything. Go you know, fuck yourself. You criticize shit. Go back to your fucking Tumblr, pussy. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, how did uh, who who did you come here to see? Like, is there like a band in particular that's like your favorite? You I mean, see? it's ain't really about that, man. It's about Steven. Uh, you know, I'm so to see the Dreaded Boys. I ain't seen them yet. I've been friends with Tanner for God only fucking knows how long. Uh, I'm real excited to see them. Um, obviously, you know, uh, my buddy Chris and we move out to the fight, getting back together. That's uh, that's good shit. Uh, honor getting back together uh, to do this is great. Of course, it's good blood. I, 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 I can't remember very many there will be blood shows where me and Steven weren't out there either cold clocking motherfuckers or instigating someone else to cold clock somebody. So well, that, that actually segues into my next question. Yeah. How do you feel about crowd killing? <laughs> How the fuck do you think I feel about it? <laughs> elaborate, elaborate. I don't think I need to. Okay. I'm fucking, if you, listen, I'm so over this fucking shit every two weeks on Facebook about, oh, crowd killing is wrong and you need to keep the pit in the pit. Why don't you shut the fuck up? You know what you signed up for. There's a fucking verbal liability waiver you fucking sign when you come to one of these shows, okay? If you get if you're if you're here and you get the fucking teeth smacked out of your head, there ain't nothing you can say about it. I'm gonna be smacking people all night. Thank you. Alright, and this um a little hard, a little bit hard hitting. Um if I were here today, what would you like to tell them? I miss that motherfucker. And, uh... I bet that's all we really had uh, on, the, on the docket. We do appre appreciate your answers, man. That's Absolutely. Good. Thanks, Steve. No problem, dude. Sorry, I don't know how to mean to dig in, dig in deep, man. But we do appreciate it. It's all good, dude. I just miss my fucking friend, bro. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Keith. Can you tell us your name and uh, what band or any affiliation you have? My name's Jason and I play guitar for Peacekeepers. Okay. How long have you been playing for Peacekeepers? About four years since we started. I started on bass, but now I play guitar. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's, that's probably what I was going to do eventually. Um, what do you? Uh, what got you into hardcore? Uh, definitely uh, local, local metal and hardcore. I went to my first show when I was 14. Got an invite on MySpace, so internet culture, probably what got me into hip hop. <laughs> MySpace, okay. <laughs> what was it? What was like? What was like? What was your first? What was it? That was uh, for you. Was uh, Corn that got you into? Yeah. yeah. What was your? First, what was your starter band? Oh, my starter band. <laughs> well, who else? You take that Corn cool started it all. Probably Metallica. Metallica. Okay. Rage Against the Machine. Me and my friend would hang out, and listen yeah. to those two bands. You, li you listen to real music. I was over here listening to Corn. <laughs> 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 Uh, and Lit Biscuit too, I know. I'm sorry, guys, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, what would you say to someone uh, who's trying to get into hardcore since you've since you been in it for a while? Uh, definitely come out and check out a show. Uh, it's a lot better seeing it live and checking it out on the TV screen. Uh, you get a lot different experience. 
Uh, yeah, I can agree with that. <laughs> There's a, that actually brings me to my next question. What would you say to the critics of hardcore? A little more hard. It's definitely not as scary as it seems. It looks, looks real violent, looks real scary, but when you get there, it's just real friendly. Even if you get hit, it's usually your friend hitting you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so so you're, in, you're, in, you're in one of the bands, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, is there, are there any of the bands here that you would like to... Uh, like you wanted to come see, you really, really stoked seeing? Yeah, absolutely, Honor, for sure. Mm -hmm. I saw them a bunch when I was younger, and I'm stoked to see them again. Sorry about that. No. Uh, there Will Be Blood. Never got a chance to see them when I was younger, but stoked to find out what that was like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, heard, I heard about uh, There Will Be Blood all back when I was living in Columbus, way back when. Um, see, uh, cha -cha 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 -cha. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. Uh, how do you feel about how do you feel about crowd killing? <laughs> I'm for it if it's tasteful. Tasteful, gotcha. Gotcha. Um, That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I I know. Uh, um, it's not going to be. <laughs> I know you're here to have some fun for uh, for Five Fest and, uh, and and the memory of Stephen Five. Um, I was about to say, uh, uh, did you know Five? Uh, I didn't know him terribly well, but I met him in a food line once. I was wearing a Vela Maya shirt, and he says, I like your shirt. This dude was wearing a bandana and some cowboy boots with a homewrecker shirt. <laughs> That's wild. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, um, I guess I, I'm, I'm stoked to see y'all play, and I'm stoked to see how the rest of the bands play. We, uh, yeah, we appreciate uh, you answering some questions. And uh, yeah, break a leg, I guess, is what you think. Yeah. Yeah. I think if the night goes well, I will. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Jason.
rolling. Bring your chairs just a little bit closer together. Perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hey there, uh, we're WK Productions. We're here to promote, uh, help promote Five Fest with y'all. Um, can you just give your names first? I am Sam from There Will Be Blood. Um, I'm the vocals for There Will Be Blood. All right. Um, we have just a couple of like hard uh, softball questions. <laughs> uh, we just want to throw out. Uh, what got you into hardcore? Honestly. So, you know, everybody goes through their own musical journey, but. Uh, it kind of, interestingly enough, started with my dad, you know, showing me hard rock bands, Deep Purple and stuff like that. And I always felt the hardcore was the natural evolution of that kind of music, you know? Like, uh, you take original hard rock, like the boys from the 50s and 60s, and then you get your first metal bands in like the 70s and the 80s, and that progresses to thrash metal, death metal. Hardcore and metalcore. And here we are. That does and seem like a natural evolution. Yeah, that's, it, you know, it does to me. Yeah. And uh, you know, I know it's not that way for everybody, but that's definitely what's always for. No, but I, I can see that thoroughway, that line that you're you're, you're referring to. Um, uh, what would you say to someone who's like new into getting into hardcore? Does the scene or just the music in itself? Like, what would you say? Would you offer them one of those Deep Purple albums from you when know, you were a kid? For people today, I feel like there's so much of an internet presence with music that people sort of start to forget that there's real people behind it. They start to forget that the bands are human beings and that the fans themselves are human beings. So when you like the music that somebody else likes, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily give you a responsibility to be a part of that community, but it gives you an opportunity to meet people that are like-minded, that they don't even necessarily share the same beliefs that you do. But if you like the music and it means something to you, somebody else feels that way too. And you can find a sense of community. I like how you uh, you brought up that it. it's not a responsibility, but it's more of like an opportunity to, to get into the... Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good point there. Nobody likes to feel well. And, uh, I mean, these questions are for, bo for both of you as well. So if you, if you feel, uh, feel free to chime in. <laughs> same thing. Uh, I mean, he's talking about there's so much social media stuff. There's ways for you to find out, man. You go on YouTube and just music for days. Yep. You know, you get into hardcore metal or death metal, whatever it is you like, you start, like, start, like, start going to the shows and stuff, or, there's always something going on around in your area, no matter where you live, and uh, start going to shows, supporting bands, and stuff like that, and, you know, coming up in a band and stuff, you know, it's a struggle, you know, everybody's like, oh, you make money, you know, this and that, I mean, I'll do it for the I mean, that's what like, it helps, I mean, we can't do it without them. And that's all I say is get involved in it. You know, just keep checking out bands. Give bands a chance. You know, list to them. At least give them a chance. You know? Just uh, see them through their, their, hard, their harder patches? Yeah. Because like, it's going to be better, better yeah. on them? I like that. Um, a little a little more softball, I guess. <laughs> I would say, uh, what would you say to the critics of the, of the scene or the music style, the genre uh, of hardcore in general? Um, what would you say to the critics in that one? I would say that you don't get to ignore the negative energy that people have inside of it. You don't get to ignore the frustration or even their hate to a certain point. Mm -hmm. That the negative things that you keep inside of yourself and don't necessarily feel like it's appropriate to talk about are the only things that hardcore really talks about. You know, you can take that everywhere from like people who feel abused and sing wild songs about that to like religious elements of heavier music. It's, um, you know, there's always going to be a critic. Somebody's always going to be offended at something or some inverted cross on a t shirt or what have you. But the fact is that people respond to things like that because of something that's inside of them. And I don't really think it's appropriate to, to belittle an emotional response to something that makes you feel at home. Because that's why we're here in the first place. Okay. So it doesn't matter what you do. You can put out the best album ever. Somebody's just going to say something about it just to say something. And all I say is just ignore it and you just keep doing what you're going to do. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> their opinion of what you're doing is not going to stop you from doing it if you're in a band. I'm not going to, oh, this person said that we suck or bad. Well, we're going to stop playing now. So, okay, we're just going to keep pushing forward. We're going to keep doing our thing, and uh, that's what we're going to do. That would, that would, that would be really I mean, you could take, I'd be remiss if that were you the case. You can take <laughs> what they say and criticism and stuff and, I guess, feed off of it and push harder and make something better and just keep doing it to shut them up. Yeah. Have you have y'all uh, encountered uh, like some really harsh criticisms <laughs> yeah. that, that like kind of 
you were on the edge of like Jimmy and me and doing this or uh, uh, so back in the day uh, Winston used to have a lot of like church games and stuff okay we, we, we were <laughs> we were banned from a lot of the venues because of what our beliefs was with the whole religion aspect and all that stuff you know just being uh, open minded about stuff and didn't agree and wouldn't let us come and play just because of that so and, you know, some of our lyrics, some of the stuff we did, it's like, no, nah, we don't want y'all here. <laughs> so you, were, you called, were you called There yeah. Will Be Blood then? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. 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 You yeah. were? Oh, wow. No, so. that was, um, I mean, we're, we're talking at this point, <coughs> we're talking about almost a decade of history. Oh. Um, you know, there's like four years since the last time that we did a reunion show, and it was a year and a half before that that we were actually touring. Okay. So, you know, it, it really is like... I guess that a lot of active bands might have a different perspective on some of these things. Yeah. But we come from more of a classical mentality. At this point, it's almost an old school system of thought. You know, okay. like the late 2000s, very, very early 2010s. Like, I mean, the thing that we were doing, we were kind of trying to make a point. You know, we kind of had something to prove. We just want to do it. Express yourself. Come yeah. out and just, you know, if you got rage built up in your anger. Go violent at our shows. We promoted yep. violence. I know a lot of venues was against it and stuff. I'm not saying go out and attack pits. Go out and let all your anger out. But a lot of venues didn't like us saying or doing that or telling people to go yep. off because kids were, I mean, going crazy. So in your, uh, uh, the, under the lens that you guys were speaking, you were talking about here's an outlet for it. Yes. Not being like, yeah, just punch somebody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it's like yeah. the the whole thing with the crowd killing. I mean that's that's its own conversation, but the whole the whole concept of parkour is like I was talking about earlier, to have a sense of community, have a place to belong. Yes. And that was one of the things that we tried really hard to make sure that people had a way to do, you know, like it, I think that people liked our music and responded to our live presence because they felt like there was some real shit going on, and they felt like they could belong to it because it wasn't just about us. You know? Yeah, I like that. I got one for you. Do you have any advice for the, the young kid that wants to start his own band? Um, what would you say to him? I would say that, yeah, I mean, there's... Music has done so much for me, not like financially or you know any kind of fame or anything like that. It's done so much for me in the development of my personality, becoming who I am as a human being. Awesome. And I think that I think that a lot of people get nervous. They don't think that they're good enough. Some people aren't good enough. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> But you absolutely need to chase the thing that you want, and if you want to be a musician and you have any shot of doing anything that's fun or that you enjoy that means something to you, you should absolutely fucking do it. I cannot recommend doing that enough. It's not easy. It's, it's not, not easy. always fun, <laughs> but it's always going to mean something to you, and you're going to earn everything that you've got. Respect. I mean, everybody Respect. starts from somewhere, no matter what you do, and just keep doing it. And you know, just keep pushing yourself. Don't listen. I mean, you can start a band. And there's some kids want to start, and you get like we was talking about the crit. People are like, oh, you got suck, you know this and that. And you know, kids starting out, like, okay, they might get offended about like we're not good enough for doing it, so we're not gonna do it. Nah, no, fuck that. Just keep doing. It. Keep doing. You, you keep doing what you want to do, and uh, you know, get to where you want to be and stuff. And that's how it's gonna work. You better smile. Uh, uh, I'll slap you. So. Uh, I'm, I don't want to come out of left field, but I was going to ask you um, if Fife were here today, would you? What would you like to tell them? Um, and uh, any fond memories uh, you'd like to speak on? You don't have to, but so yeah. I don't want to. I don't want there to be a misnomer. Fife is here today. Oh. Everybody that's here who knows why they're here. Everybody who's here to not participate, to not just go to another show. You know, mm -hmm. like I mean, we. There was a long time where we had opportunities to play shows that we weren't playing. This is um, this isn't an opportunity. This is a responsibility. I owe that to him. We all owe that to him. We owe it to the community that he was a part of, because all of all of that shit that I was talking about, having somewhere to belong, feeling like you've got a sense of community. That was the community that he was a part of. Stephen was always, I mean, we were part of every single show we played. And if he was out of state playing in Virginia, or, you know, so he was there. He'd have to find a way to get there. Like I said, it was going out and releasing that aggression and stuff. He went through a lot of stuff growing up. That's how he escaped from doing it. So, like I said, I knew him since he's probably 13 or 14, watching him grow up. And uh, 
it's amazing and all that stuff. And, uh, so it sucks what happened. And, uh, but like Sam said, you know, it's our responsibility to do that you know, for him. Uh, yeah, I used to uh, all I where, say to Stephen is wherever he's at, good. you know, heaven, hell, or whatever, he's going to hear it today. And I guarantee you, with what's Gary Hatch here today, all these people's going to hear all these bands, he's going to hear it. I know he's smiling. He's like, fuck. Where he's at, I just know it. Awesome, man. I mean, you can feel it. All, everybody's here because of him. All these bands, all these people are coming, and you can feel like Steven's here. Like earlier, like our little group we had, I literally almost like, where's Steven at? I'm like, forgot. I'm like, he's going to be here today. You know, it's, it's weird, but. So, I, re I really appreciate your sentiment that this is a responsibility it's, to, to, I mean, to get I mean, back to him. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 I think that's the overall arching uh, sentiment for this entire festival, I'm assuming, is, yeah, is, that's what it feels like. The only reason it happened in the first place, the very first conversation that we had six or seven years ago about it, it's like, we're going to do this. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of times where, you know, the coordination that it takes for all of us to get together and make it happen and practicing that has to happen. I mean, Jesus Christ, I had to get two of my best friends to learn the songs, to fill in for this set. But I appreciate them and I love them and they know what the deal is and that's why they were able to do it. And, you know, this one's for you. Yep. Thank you so much. We really appreciate this, this entire thing. Thank so. you, guys. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. I'm Joe, I'm Joe Baswell. Joe Baswell? Alright. How did you get into hardcore, Joe Baswell? Uh, I started off when I was younger, man. I, I grew up in uh, Casey, 
uh, South Carolina. It's kind of a small town, and most of my friends, we were kind of the black sheep of our of our town. So we all met up and went to New Brooklyn Tavern. And then later, I, I got back into it after a, a close friend of mine's passing, and it, it's been a family for me. So. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of, a lot of resonance with this with this very this environment right now. Yes. Yeah. Very tight. Um, what would you say to someone uh, who's new and trying to get into hardcore, the scene or the music in itself? Um, I think understanding its roots and kind of knowing where it comes from is a big help. You know, understanding that it's, it's, it's similar in punk and it is punk in a way of the aspect of going against the grain and going against the counterculture, but it does kind of have its own feel to it. You know, in, in some things, whether it's positive or negative, like the aggro kind of feel to it happens. But I think if you understand where it comes from, it helps a lot. And also, don't be afraid to talk to people, you know? I know people can kind of seem off cold, but if you can kind of go out there, and you'll meet a lot of good friends. I mean, all my friends I have today are pretty much because of our course. I, I, I've seen a lot of uh, tough guys around here. A little, a little, I was a little afraid to talk to myself. <laughs> so I'll take that, I'll take that, uh, that advice. <laughs> what would you say to the, uh, the critics of hardcore, uh, the scene or, or music? Um, That's an interesting question. Um, I think that with every culture, there's things that you can argue, you know, what's appropriate and what's not. Um, I think that it, it is up for criticism. I don't think it should be not criticized. I think people within the scene itself need to criticize it. That's how it grows. That's how every music genre grows. Um, so I don't think it should be left on the out, like away from the outside. I think the outside's a lot of criticize it, but I think the inside should be criticizing it just as much. And the outside, um, criticize it, but also, you know, just kind of pay attention, like, don't completely shut us out because you see a bunch of people swinging. There's more to it, you know, there's a lot more to it than that. Um, a little more uh, softball on this one. How do you feel about crowd killing? <laughs> um, crowd killing for me, uh, it, when, I, when I first got into it, it was kind of like just, you know, the, the crazy ones in the scene, and now it's, it's become such a big thing. I think that crowd killing uh, has its rules just like anything else. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's, you know, it's, it's all in good fun. It's the same reason people play, play football. They all come together, they all have one thing. You know, we all go out there and we beat the shit out of each other. But we do it because we know at the end of the day, when we get done, we're gonna go back to the house, you know, drink a couple beers and, and, and talk shit. It, it's, it's not a, you know, I, I understand the problems with it, but at the end of the day, if you come to a hardcore show, just, yeah. You're gonna get punched. In the mouth. You're gonna get punched in the mouth. Um, old meets new, new yeah, meets old, kind that's, of. That's yeah. The most exciting part I think about the show is you have a lot of the new school kids and the old, you know, the old school kids, and they they all have different. Uh, culturally, they're completely different, but they all here for someone that they all miss and love. So. All right. Well, we appreciate that. This is uh, Joey Baswell. <laughs> Joey Boswell, um, one of our local hardcore kids. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Nice. What's going on? Yeah, first, we have fucking people, you know, going to almost like a slurs and shit. And then we got a dude outside, Day Day, the guy, the, the bigger black dude that kicked that dude. Yeah, some, some guy outside sitting there and calling him the fucking N word. And he got his ass beat. He, but he's still out there. It just blows my mind. Like, it's 2017. We're in a hardcore scene. It's supposed to be progressive. And we're here for a benefit, for a dead friend. And y'all are going to do some ignorant ass shit like that. It blows my fucking mind. What does hardcore mean to you? It's a culture, it's a family, it's a life. It's, it is what it is, you know what I mean? You accept it or you don't. What influenced you to become part of this community? I went to uh, E-Town concert, uh, what was it, 97, 98? And uh, just seeing the love, seeing people get hit. And when you get hit, people fucking, uh, they pick you up, they give you fucking kisses, they fucking love it. You know what I mean? It's just a family vibe where it's like, wait, I'm accepted here. Anywhere else you go, no one's accepted. And, uh, Let's go, I like that. Right. You I like know that. what I mean? Hardcore shows, fucking, you're accepted. You're allowed to do what you want to do. And at the end of the day, fucking, everybody's there for you. Everybody's family. Everybody's like, yo, fuck it. Like, you hit this dude, fucking... You gotta shake hands, and you end up becoming best friends. Half my best friends is from fucking dancing. They're like, yo, bro, you fucking knocked me out. But at the end of the day, we made fucking uh, peace, and now those are my best friends. Those are the dudes who have my back, and it, that's what it's about. The hardcore culture is about fucking love and about family. That's exactly what it is, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah.
Kill shirts. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, That's I, them. I, we were just over at the merch booth and we saw some of those um, red shirts. What was your, what's your favorite? Uh, what, what's, what's the band that you, you came here to see besides the band that you're in? Neglected and uh, there will be blood. Yes. Yeah. I'm still. Wait, I'm waiting. I'm really ready for it. It's, there will it's be blood. gonna. It's gonna be crazy. Gonna be awesome. What was your, what's your favorite uh, moment that happened uh, <laughs> so far? Not the fight. Here. Oh, that's just, your favorite moment. I mean, I, I, I know it sucks to say this, but I, I mean, I really dig all the chaos. I just wish it wasn't at this event because this is for something else. You know, this is for someone who lost their life. But uh, I just, I like, I like being here with all the people that are like me. You know. I see, I see that energy. Well, sir, it's definitely here. Well, sir, we do appreciate you uh, having a short talk with us. And uh, last oh. question. Yeah, what's up? If. Uh, if a young kid came to you and he wanted to start his own band, what advice would you give him? Man, I would just tell him this. It ain't easy. You're going to run into so many obstacles and you're going to want to quit. I quit plenty of times. But if that's what you want to do and that is your dream, pursue it. But you got to put in the work. It ain't just going to fall on your fucking lap. you got to put in the work to get what you want. People boo you. People say you suck. Maybe work on whatever they don't like. Maybe you do suck. Maybe you should play your guitar better. Maybe you should work on your vocals. Take the criticism, but don't let it defeat you. And keep pushing. Nice That's what I would tell him. Nice. That's nice. good. That's a, that's a solid one. I appreciate your answers. Absolutely. Man. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm Danny from WK Productions, and I'm here to interview you and promote Fife Fest. Can you uh, first give us your name and your affiliation? I am Josh Cor, and my affiliation. Which one do we go with at this point? <laughs> with, with like a, with with the festival. Um, um, or, or... I play a part with Hunter and Keith and about six other people at this point to make sure that we could do something for somebody with family to us. And there we go. Look at him. Hear him. There he is, little Hunter. But we're making sure that we can have a celebration for someone we love. All right. Um, what would you, uh, uh, are you into hardcore? Is this your, is this your scene? Uh, Never been here before. <laughs> Never been here before? Never. Well, what got you into hardcore then? Uh, the music, the genre, the, the group? Brandy Alexander. Brandy Alexander. Uh, Ace's Basement. Okay. It's kind of like the beginning of my days. And then... Sorry. Damn right. Okay. Back to it. Well, well, we have yelling. Can I get like an outlet or something? Let's go in, by Brandy Alexander. <laughs> Brandy Alexander of Basement. Uh... Um, yeah, I mean, Brandy Alexander was everything for me. Yeah. When Hunter was wearing girl jeans. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> we all wore girl jeans. They didn't make skinnies for no, guys I did at first. too. I wasn't yeah. my part. Yeah, I had he, to... he used to wear his fabulous gloves in high school, too. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I still do. What would you? Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <Kevin's> <laughs> what would you try to say to someone um, who's trying to get into hardcore? Uh, should they get skinny jeans with? Uh, I'm fucking. I say, what the uh, hell you fucking want to? Yeah. Okay. Um, if I can wear this here, please. Yeah. <laughs> but with, like to get like to like to get someone into hardcore like that's you know on if the. If they like it, yeah. then they listen to it. If they want to show up, then they do. Okay. And it's up to the people that book the shows to make sure that people can come there and feel free to do it. Okay. To have a safe environment. I like that point. Um, uh, what would you say to the critics of the scene and um, and hardcore music? Do something music? about it. Uh, that's enough. That's a thing. I love it. <laughs> um, you see, uh, what uh, what band would you say would be like the, the one that you're just most excited to, to see uh, playing tonight? Oh hell! Anybody saw the goddamn Civil War? <laughs> um, all of the PC? No. Um, Honor and there will be one. So, I mean, there's they've been bands that I've been friends with and Valley followed for a long time. Yeah. Very talented. A little a little uh, hardball question here. Oh God. How do you feel about crowd killing? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is going to depend on the hour of the night. Okay, so, <laughs> 7 p.m., ask me again. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. Now, honestly, when, when I first started booking a lot of shows, it was because of, like, very militant crowd killing. Mm -hmm. But the difference between that and just actually having fun. And if you're going to stay on the edge, there's a difference between somebody just really just straight up decking you in the face and you just getting hit. Right? Like, if you get hit by a leg, cool, you're standing on the edge of the pit, move the fuck out of the way. Yeah. Okay. And but if somebody just straight up like comes out and just moves like after like three rows of people and decks this little girl, like that's kind of that's a little problem, I think. Yeah. You know. Um, but people are gonna get through. This one's a little a little really a, a little um, hard hitting as well. So, um, uh, did you know Fife and uh, you have any fond memories? And what would you like to say to Fife if he uh, was here to to answer? Oh, I'm kidding. Yes, I know him very well. He was one of my best friends. He, back when I started Crime Siege, he worked personal security for me with Justin Snyder and made sure that I was okay. He was always a brother to me. He's a beautiful person. If I could say anything to him, I'll tell him that I'm proud of who he was and what he did. How he treated my brother. I would trade the people that we were around. If I could tell them anything, I'd just say, I love you. I'm proud of you. I appreciate that. Decided I want to come out of left field with that. I'd say. <laughs> we do appreciate you uh, answering these questions. Of course, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this has been Josh Gore. Thank you very much.
there's anything you would like to say to Fife if he was here to, to just pretty much hold him and talk to him about the situation he got in. I know it's a rough patch and uh, it still hits hard to me on that. So I grew up with Steven. He's like a little brother since he was like 13 or 14. And uh, I'm older. I mean, I here he turned 31. He's you know, a little bit younger than me. But I try to protect him as much as I could going to shows. Like I started taking the shows. You know, back to your question before, he got into it. You know, I took him to shows that I was going to play. He wanted to get into it. And, I, you know, the path he went down, you know, there's help, man. I mean, your brothers are here for you. You know, we get you help. We love you. And uh, that's about all you can really do. You know, just help, try to help him out as much as possible. You know. And uh, you can't you can't help someone if they can't help themselves. And, uh, I wish we could go back and restart. And, uh, Well, that's uh, powerful, man. That's beautiful, man. That's pretty much. I think I said, just told him this time, man. It's one of our career players. You know, we get through it. And uh, he's young. It's still, I think, about every day. But I've lost a lot of friends to, you know, OD and addiction and stuff like that. It's a rough path. Once you start on, it's hard to. Well, Hunter, we really appreciate you. Pouring your heart out with us right now. I know it's I appreciate, so I appreciate you guys coming out. Absolutely. Again, I swear to God, I'll give you myself. Hunter's gonna do it. Actually, I'm just gonna make Hunter do it. He's bigger than more intimidating. But the reason I'm up here is I'd rather give some motivation speech and blah blah blah. We'd all be happy and clap. But we all love Stephen and those who are very close to him. Who shouted this? We all love Stephen. I hate Jacob Durham very much right now. <laughs> Can you shut up for a second? <laughs> God. Anyway, we're pretty good over time. We all love Stephen, but there's one person here that even though, like, no matter how close we were to him, there was one person that was there for him every single day with him by his side for every moment. His best friend, who I feel like needs a lot more credit than they've been given, Joshua McDowell. Come here. Yeah. Yeah. Good boy, stood by his side forever. And I'm very proud of you. And I love you. Let's give it up for Josh.